Um, we have with us Itzi Kazaf, the founder of uh, Vatbox, an Israeli company. Uh, I think unlike uh, a lot of the companies here, it's mostly active in, uh, in Europe. Yeah, um, that's right. Maybe tell us a few words about what you do. Okay, so for the one of you who not, is not familiar with, uh, with Vatbox, so Vatbox I think is playing in, um, sits on one of the most simple, even maybe boring business cases. We simply bring company money they're constantly leaving behind by spending VET all over the world, not just uh, Europe. And because it's not that simple to understand where you spend and how much you spend and what is the way to get the VET back, they just consider everything as, a, as an expense. And we know how to figure out how to find those transactions, how to basically understand exactly how much VET was spent, what is the business expense. And from that point, complete the process and recover for them uh, the VAT means we're starting with the client, saving his money, provide visibility and governance. Generally speaking, this is, um, this is Vatbox. So you woke up one morning and said, uh, I want to dedicate the next uh, five, seven, ten years of my life to, uh, to indirect tax. How does that happen? How does someone decide to, to yes, do that? Uh, so so my, back, my background is not, of course, it's not coming from any financial industry and, of course, not, uh, not tax. Uh, you know, Israeli companies, uh, they used to travel a lot since it's a small country and the market is much uh, uh, bigger and we spend a lot of money on uh, travels. Travel expense is one of the largest uh, uh, budget in companies, Israeli companies and other companies as well. And eventually, when you spend something when it comes to travel expense, in most of the case, it comes with VAT. In my previous company, I understood that I'm spending a lot of money. And in many cases, there's a VAT there. The VAT is not a cost. I can get the VAT back. I try to understand how much can I get and how much I'm getting actually. And I found out basically it's not a simple uh, mission. When I finished my previous company, I tried to understand what is happening in the market, trying even to look at the big enterprise markets, speaking about Fortune 500 companies. By the way, those guys they used to spend above a billion annually on your travel expense, where there's like multi-millions that can be recovered on a yearly basis saving to the bottom line. And I realized basically in many cases, they're just leaving the entire money, considering everything as, a, as an expense, uh, because the level of challenge and the risk, the compliance side here, is not that simple and easy. And for them, multi-millions, it's important. And it's a real value, but the risk and the overhead is so high, so they're just leaving the money or taking just small of it. So you mentioned four, Fortune 500. Uh, can you uh, mention some... Uh Names of companies who use Vatbox today? Yes, I think that, that I would say the top uh, uh, four best industries for Vatbox or the technology industry uh, from the Amazon, Dell, EMC, and many other technology companies using Vatbox as a global service provider, uh, uh, going to the life science and pharmaceutical market from Roche, LA Lilly, and others, um, all the way to um, manufacturers, leading manufacturer companies, consulting companies. Mainly, I would say, basically, every company can get that level of service. We just focus on the moment on the big enterprise. But uh, the need and the challenge may be not the same, but it's there for every company. If they're living just 1,000 or 10 millions every year, it's there. So I guess uh, VAT is mostly a European issue, or maybe today uh, a non-American issue, we would say. Um, and you are, for an Israeli company, very focused on Europe, with offices in Amsterdam and London. How is it being an Israeli company focused on, on Europe as a primary market? I mean, most people around here go straight to the US, like Lemonade, like others. How is it working in Europe? What are the unique challenges? I would start by saying that about 70% of our clients, originally US-based, yes, we, we sell them to um, the EU, means meeting the headquarters in the EU, uh, in Europe. Um, but at a high level for your question, I would say that, um, you know, there are the best practices that are relevant for every country. It's very important to build the right team. It's all about team building and the leadership and so on. When you go to Europe, you have to understand every country is a different case. You have to adjust your messages. You have to adjust your sales cycle. Uh, uh, it's very important to understand how to land and, and uh, uh, ex expand uh, the deals. It's different from Germany to the UK, France, and so on. There are some countries who are considered as, uh, I would say, early adapters, that if you want to go and have your first success stories and references in those countries, you better go to the Nordic countries or the English-speaking countries at the beginning. But then, of course, to be able to 
expand as expected at the top European countries. It's all about building the right teams, adjust all your business cycles and messages and so on, and at the same time, of course, be able to look at the global uh, picture. I guess, by the way, you probably have maybe a different perspective as a, as a European uh, uh, VC. How do you see Israeli, maybe American companies do, doing in, uh, in Europe? I think that we generally think that um, European companies, European corporates, European investors are more open to cooperating, to investing, and uh, hopefully at some point to acquiring outside of Europe and tech in general. And Noah and Tel Aviv is a, is a good example for that. And uh, I hope we'll see more and more Germans uh, particularly, but uh, other Europeans coming to Israel to, uh, to do business uh, from the corporate side, from the venture side as well. Uh, so it's a, a booming industry right now in Europe, and, uh, but still it's very early days. Um, you know, you started, you spent your first uh, 15 years in the army, right? Uh, what's more brutal, being a combat uh, commander or working as a uh, startup entrepreneur? Yeah, of course there's a big difference uh, been, uh, between uh, uh, being a commander in the army. Um, I would say more than better than me did a lot of research about this startup nation and the part of the army in this uh, uh, culture and so on. And I can share uh, uh, and agree with many of the things that were raised in that space. I can say, no, the basic stuff for a startup is be able to face with impossible missions, be agile enough, be flexible enough, uh, 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 look at the challenge in the face and, and say, okay, I can make it. Uh, uh, I will find a way to achieve it. It always comes with challenges. Uh, and even for, I think, for uh, serial entrepreneurs, there's always new st things when you're coming to uh, a new market, you're doing first time thing in a market. Uh, for me, that I think that the most uh, value that I gained for my years in the army, I guess you expect to hear more stories and stuff about my background, probably, but, we probably but that will not uh, uh, happen this We stage, probably yeah. shouldn't. Um, for the last uh, sort of 10 questions, where do we see Vatbox in three years? Where are you? So the challenge when it comes to Vatbox, at the end of the day, it's also a big data company. Since the challenge with us is to be able to understand exactly the story of each and every transaction. How much was spent, where, for what, on behalf of who, and so on. Once you have the data, then you can apply this VAT recovery application. And there are a few other applications that are now based on the same data that we manage to capture and to valid using those AI tools. There are other applications we're going to deploy, and we're deploying, actually, because just because our client ask, uh, are based on the same data. So I think in the end of the day, the level of data that VATBOX sits, today mostly in Europe, but as we go basically all over the world, over the world since, again, VET, you have all over the world. It's in Asia, it's in Gulf countries, it's in, in Russia, in Mexico, in Canada. It's, it's almost in each and every country. So be able to sit at that level of data that basically came from big enterprise and give you a different view of different opportunities to support the companies and to support other parts of the industries. With that level of data, this is, I think, the future of Vatbox. Me, maybe being more practical is, in one hand, to dominate the, uh, the European market, and the other side, expand to the US, Asia, and other, I would say, regions. And at the same time, use the same data and technology that we have to provide more value out of that uh, uh, data. Well, I'll tell you, the only thing I never checked is if the ticker VAT is open on uh, NASDAQ. We need to, we should check it for the okay, future. Okay, so this is a good chance to be the first one. Wow. Exactly. Thank you very much.